Hello and welcome to episode 66.1 of the Brain Manifesto, brought to you by the Ecclesian House. This is Pastor Bill, and we're going to do things a little different this week. First off, I want to give a shout out to our listeners. You guys are tuning in from Russia, Washington, Tennessee, New York, Illinois, Arizona, Virginia, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Ireland, California, and right here in Texas. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. I've been watching the podcast stats, and I just want to say thank you to all of you for listening. I am so glad to have the opportunity to speak into your lives. Like I said, this week is going to be a little different. We are going to be doing this devotional style with a release every day this week leading up to Easter. There's a week-long devotional that's available for download on the Ecclesian House website. That's E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A-N-H-O-U-S-E dot com. And today we're looking at Jesus anointing and the Last Supper. The following is a composite that I put together of Matthew chapter 26, verses 3 through 25, Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 21, Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 14, and John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people assembled in the courtyard of the high priest, who was named Caiaphas, conspiring to find a cunning way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But they were afraid of the people, so they agreed, not during the festival, so that there won't be a riot. While Jesus was in Bethany, at the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, A woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured it on his head. But some were expressing indignation to one another. Why has this perfume been wasted? For this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And then they began to scold her. Jesus replied, Leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a noble thing for me. You always have the poor with you, and you can do what is good for them whenever you want, but you do not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body in advance for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then, Satan entered Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve. He went to the chief priests and temple police to discuss how he could betray Jesus and hand him over to them. He asked them, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? When they heard this, they were glad and weighed out thirty pieces of silver that they promised to give him. He accepted the offer and started looking for a good opportunity to betray him when a crowd wasn't present. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and prepare the Passover so that you may eat it? So he sent Peter and John and told them, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? They asked him. Listen, he replied, Go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Wherever he enters, tell the owner of the house. The teacher says, My time is near, and I am celebrating the Passover at your place with my disciples. Where is my guest room that I may eat? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. So the disciples went out, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When evening came, he arrived with the twelve. When it was time for supper, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had given everything into his hands, that he had come from God, and that he was going back to God. So he got up from supper, laid aside his outer clothing, took a towel and tied it around himself. 
Next, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who asked him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I'm doing you don't realize now, but afterward you will understand. You will never wash my feet, Peter replied. Jesus answered, If I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. One who is bathed, Jesus told him, doesn't need to wash anything except his feet, but he is completely clean. You are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. This is why he said, not all of you are clean. When Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer clothing, he reclined again and said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are speaking rightly, since that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. Truly I tell you, a servant is not greater than his master, and a messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. While they were reclining and eating, Jesus said, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. He took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. They all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Deeply distressed, they began to say to him one by one, Surely not I, Lord. He replied, It is one of the twelve, the one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. He will betray me. For the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Judas, his betrayer, replied, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said it, he told them. To get some reflection on this passage, please go download the devotional. It's there on the website for free. There's no charge, and you won't even have to give us any info before you download it. If you'd like us to have your information, there is a contact form on the website, and I would love to hear from you guys. This is Pastor Bill saying, download the devotional, and until tomorrow. <laughs>